what's going on y'all what it is so let's go ahead and slide on this topic and i want to talk about some interesting emails and dms that i've gotten in regards to the speculation that diddy is somehow behind what happened to jamie fox here recently when he suffered a stroke and so a lot of people seem to think that jamie fox could be a target right because of the information that he knows about diddy so there's a video that has resurfaced where Jamie Foxx is talking about he actually filmed a lot of parties that Diddy threw out in LA, in the Hamptons, in Philadelphia, and things of that nature. Now during this video where Jamie seemed to be talking in some great detail about what took place at these parties, you could tell that he was holding a lot of information back. Of course, I believe that if Diddy gave him permission to film at his parties, I believe that there was some type of NDA that was signed. Now, I don't know if Jamie got some type of inclination and thought it was all good in the hood if he came on camera and presented the clean version, so to speak, of what happened at these Diddy parties. But I don't think that it's about what he said on camera. I think it's about what Jamie Foxx knows and what he didn't say on camera, which could lead people to believe that Jamie potentially has some damaging life altering and incriminating evidence to use against Diddy if he wanted to, right? And so when you have information to come out that Jamie actually communicated to law enforcement that he felt that somebody was trying to do something to him, you just have to do your due diligence and take everything into account, especially when someone is worried about their life being deleted. Now, what a lot of people are not realizing about this video that has resurfaced where Jamie is talking about Diddy's wild parties, this is about a five-year-old video and what's interesting about this dynamic is that when i did my research right this video dropped about april of 2018 and you know what is extremely alarming about this show is that kim porter passed away that same year in november now you have to ask yourself what is the repetitive issue that keeps surrounding and evolving around diddy when it comes to his secrets when it comes to these parties the repetitive issue is the fact that there's video footage out there that is incriminating. There's video footage out there that could blow up a whole Hollywood scene, so to speak. Kim was said to have footage of Diddy's intimate interactions with his male counterparts and things like that. Remember her two laptops were stolen from the house after she passed away. And so it's not above the realm of possibility that Jamie had within his possession and probably still has within his possession some more substantial, some more factual and accurate dark information, right? And who's to say that he didn't share that with Kim Porter before Kim passed away? Now, another thing that I wanna bring to y'all's attention is the fact that after I did my first video about Jamie being hospitalized, right? About two days after that, I started getting emails about this whole situation about Diddy may have had something to do with it, right? And so I didn't pay it no mind and it started ramping up in the last past three to four days. And so I felt compelled to come on here and speak about it. But anyway, after that second day of me receiving that email that Diddy may have had something to do with Jamie's hospitalization, I basically started watching Diddy's pages like a hawk, his Instagram and his Twitter, right? And the one thing I did notice is that Diddy didn't publicly send Jamie any type of well wishes. This brother didn't even say, man, I'm wishing Jamie to have a speedy recovery. I'm praying for you, brother. None of that, right? Now, to me, that sounds particularly strange given the fact that Diddy and Jamie have an iconic history together. Now, you can present the notion that maybe Diddy contacted Jamie behind the scenes. But one thing that I do know is that Diddy took time out of his day on yesterday to send his well wishes and condolences to Harry Belafonte who passed away. And to be honest, I think it's worth noting here that Harry Belafonte did not like sisters, all right? Just putting it out there. But let me say this, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s and ever since I knew Jamie Foxx to grace the screen of In Living Color, uh, seeing him work his way up musically, seeing him work his way up as an actor, seeing him work his way up to actually win an Oscar, this brother, for the most part, has been unproblematic. But now, all of a sudden, Jamie was catching hell on the set of his new movie that's set to air on Netflix. He had to call the police because, you know, people on the set was trying to scam him for $40,000 and it got a little bit out of hand and Jamie had to call the police because he was in fear then. And then when he had his medical emergency, he called the police. The police basically showed up to the hospital to question him about what he felt took place and what's going on. So yeah, there's something definitely weird going on here, right? Without a doubt. 
Now, I've reached out to people in the past that have, you know, connected the dots for me in regards to Kim Porter to ask them about this situation. I do have people looking into it for me. And so once I get any type of information, you know, I'm going to bring it to you guys. Now, what I want to do here is leave you guys with the video that everybody is talking about where Jamie Foxx is discussing Diddy and his wild parties. Now, again, I want to remind you all. It's not about what he said within this video. It's everything that he didn't say and what he actually knows. OK, so I want you guys to just check out the video if you want to. If you've already seen it, I understand if you want to exit left. All right. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Yo, yo, Fox and I came. What? What? Puffs in there. <laughs> it's coming. I'm like, damn. Yeah. So what I did was. I would show up to the party in my little uh, in a little town car. That's town, you know. I grabbed my town car so I could skirt, puff the SUVs and the road, the Bentleys, the whole night. He get out, I get out too with a camera, the big cannon. Like yo, puff, I should document this shit, right? Yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> what, what, what you talking? About? I said, no, I should get this, man. You finds for the whole night. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Excuse me. So I get that. <laughs> but at that time, it wasn't like the little camera y'all got in. It was the big intrusive cannon. I had a battery pack. Hold on, man. Let me change the pack. Put my light on here. Do that again, Puff. Do that again. I missed that one. Do that again. Put the pack. So I started following him. Wow. So I followed him the whole time. I don't remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'm filming this. And it's a pool party that is ridiculous, man. And I look up and I see Dr. Ruth. I don't know if you know who that is. <laughs> this <laughs> this <laughs> I see Dr. I said, Miss Ruth, could you please come over here? This guy by the name of Sean P. Diddy Combs. I need you to come meet him. I need this for my camera. Dr. Ruth and Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel pool dance, doing their thing, right? And you know what they're dancing to? Over in the corner, God bless, is Heavy D, mm. Andre Harrell, and they listening to a demo. You know what the demo is? Right. Bum, 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 bum. Beyonce. Bum, oh, that's bum, crazy. Bum. Wow. And then no. Andre Harrell, run that back, run that back. That's the one right there. That's gonna be the one. You just Marine. missed that. The ordering of the champagne, the whole nine. Country, country, <laughs> get this. If you call me country, I'm gonna take country, get this. So I'm filming it. That's the one. That's, That's the it. record right there. Run it back. Burn up. So Dr. Ruth Puff dancing, right? All right. of a sudden I get this, and then I I flip the camera this way. There's the me more and some young dude. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know who do this. So I said, I said, Puff, who that? Oh, that's the young cat. I asked him question. I said, cool. So I, I asked uh, uh, Demi Moore. I said, is it cool if I? She said, sure, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it was it was probably a wild night. Sure, it takes. <laughs> so I'm wa I watched when they first, mm. you know, got together. So what happened was, I'm following Puff, following Puff, and his parties were like amazing. We were in Philly one day. I, I fly to Philly. Town car, same business, go up, but Puff say this party, Playboy, this party right here, I see a million and a half dollars. I said, nigga, what? You spent a million and a half dollars on this party? I said, you come to my house, I'll throw you a party for $400, and it will rival this, not in scale, but the people there, because that's how I started. I started, I was the first social media dude. When I would do stand up, I had cue cards. This is 91. I had cue cards. And I would have people sign and put their pager numbers on it. And I would call during the week. Yo, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. So I had 800 signatures, wow. 600 women, 200 guys. So it became a floating party. Mm. So when Puff came to LA, he said, Yo, Playboy, Saturday morning, make shit happen. I said, I'm on it. Went into my phones, called 200, because I didn't have a big house, 200 of my best friends, girls that were beautiful, but not tight, but not. Bloody, you know, just in the daytime. It's daytime. So we're, we're this is my daytime crew, right? He get there. He goes, that's the girl on this movie, and that's the girl on that. I said, yeah, we all hang out. We ain't got no money, but we all hang out together. I said, look on the table. Kentucky Fried Chicken, but I put on some nice plates and some cola and a picture and whole nine. And, and, and it was great. He had a great time. And that was that same party that uh that uh Pharrell was at. But what I started doing in order to get artists together, I said, Puff, you don't understand. When we watch you from from New York, you're bigger than life to us. Mm -hmm. I said, so the million and a half dollars, yeah, you can do that, but it don't matter. Because the New York fitted baseball cap is how much? Retail. Like $25. $25, right? Yeah. I said, Puff, but on your head, 
it's priceless. Mm. And I said, now watch this. And I played bang, 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 I said, I said, look, you got these <laughs> gone. And, and it was moments like that. It was like, and then I had a studio in the back. So every time somebody would come mm -hmm. over, I would ask them to drop music there. Puff soon, because I want to get in the music. Mm -hmm. But we also started doing this thing called New Music Out. Mm -hmm. So any person that came to the house that had a song or could do stand-up mm -hmm. with it, you could perform. No one was allowed to boo or nothing like this. Watch who benefited from it. Nick Cannon used to sleep on my couch. Wow. Get out of 13 here. years old. Wow. He'd be in one part of the house. He'd be like, can I get in here? You can't come in here. You can't come in here. And he'd be like this. Like this, right? He slept on the couch. Ed Sharon was the latest. Ed Sharon oh, wow. slept. Ed Sharon, my new house, Ed Sharon slept on my studio floor for six weeks. Amen. So what we do, we do, like I said, every, what's great about what, what we do is, is that we have, I had Anthony Hamilton, I remember Anthony Hamilton had no, he, he said, man, nobody want to hear me say, I'll go watch you. I would go follow him and watch him sing in places. I'd be the only one in it. It was like he had to sing at this one little uh, open mic thing and he was saying, I'm like, sing Anthony! <laughs> Let the Lord use your Anthony. <laughs> same son, same. I mean, it's great. So the last one we had, I'm gonna tell you the ones we, that we that we had. It was amazing. And then I'm gonna go. When Drake hit, mm -hmm. I'm in the Bahamas, baby. I'm in the Bahamas. My sister hit me. My sister, she here, dark skin, always in touch. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you need to this Drake. I said, Ooh, I hit the internet. I said, oh. In my robe, I just I grabbed some wine. I said, just, I forgot to call you on your birthday. Oh, yeah. Sad yeah. I, I said, I gotta find that dude. So Brown finds him. We actually do a song together. But I was watching him and I, I took him on uh when the redheaded guy did took over for Jay Leno. Oh, Kona, Kona. Kona. I took him on Kona. I said, Kona, yeah. you don't know who this dude is. I said, his name is Drake and two girls and all that. I said, y'all up on it, he about to be the big dude. So when Drake rolled out his thing, his first album, I said, Drake, I'm gonna do a thing for you. My house is called New Music Hour, and, and I call this on my balcony. I want you to come get on my balcony. So what do you mean? I said, don't worry about it, you'll see. I said, the SUVs will pick you up, bring you to my house. Now I got a bigger house, it's like 40 acres. Women showed up to the party at three in the afternoon. Bus pulled up, 30 girls get out. Bus pull up, 40 girls get out. Mm -hmm. Crazy, I said, well ladies, he's not gonna be here till like 11 cause BET time. Mm -hmm. So we won't be here till 11, we'll, we'll wait. BET time? It was BET cause it was, it was BET award. Oh, oh, okay, we thought you were gonna No, 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 let me think, no, 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 it was the BET awards that we did. Okay. So I said, listen, he ain't gonna be here till 11. So we still setting up, right? <laughs> By the time he got there, 2,500 people counted Jesus. in my backyard. When he drove up the driveway, we had a drive-in movie theater poster of him at this artwork, what? the smooth one with the cut, you know, the, <laughs> oh, the <laughs> peacoat, the vest, <laughs> and I, the, 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 the smooth, the <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? No smiles, it's just the he drive up with all his boys, and, and it's funny when you before you get your money, everything is too big. Mm -hmm. Like his Letterman jacket was, he was like, "Oh man, oh, oh man, oh man, oh." I said, "Yeah, man." I said, yeah, man. Oh man, dog. I said, "Look at the body." Yeah. Oh, so we did it. I said, "I said, hey, I said, hey, I said, hey, Drake." It's a few people in the back want to say hi to you. Mm -hmm. Now walk around. 2,500 people. We go up on my balcony. Mm -hmm. I said, Drake, now I've done this. Puff was the first one, first major. But now it's you. We want to give you your artist. We want to, because you're going to get a mm -hmm. me another hate, mm -hmm. but the fact to what you're doing right mm -hmm. now. And so we do the interview, and I hand him the mic, and there's all these people down there. And I said, could you just say something to the people? He said, oh, man, ah, uh, ah, oh, man, what'd I say? Saying something. <laughs> He leaned over the balcony. Um, I'm more than just an option. Oh. <sighs> oh. Party shot through the roof. 
we do that till about four in the morning. Right. Most people leave. We got two hundred people left. Two or three hundred people left. I got a pianist to come around three in the morning. Played all the music unplugged. Mm. Rapped his music unplugged. New music hour at that time. We sat and we listened to other rappers rap and other people try to get their thing on. They go to like six in the morning. Wrap it up. Then we moved on to uh, um, Rick Ross. Mm. Did one same situation. Not as many people, but the women. Oh yeah. And, and Puff knew about it. Puff got there early. Yeah. <laughs> and left and left uh, Rick in L.A. Because I live outside of. LA. I said, "Well, you better get here." But Puff got all the. He about to bleed with everybody, and they got three hundred bottles of Syrah. It was crazy. <laughs> and we all. And when he showed up, I told the DJ because I had a DJ in the back. I said, "Listen, when Rick show up, just start playing." These told me back. Don't drop the beat mm. until we walk all the way through the house. When he walked through the house, it's like he had a pickle up. <laughs> and, <people was> just <laughs> <like this. laughs> and then when he finally got into the studio, Puff was standing on top of the, the, the things with the Syrah. <laughs> Crazy. And then we did uh, Two Chains and who else was like <laughs> But uh. Everybody